What's going on guys, it's CTA Prime back here again. Recently I did a three part series on building a gaming PC. Now I kind of want to get this out of the way before we even get started. This rig was not built for $550 specifically for emulation. This was built for PC gaming. But since I have it sitting here, I figured I'd go ahead and make an emulation video with this rig. In this video, I'm going to be testing some higher end emulators to see how they perform on here. Lower end stuff's going to run fine. PSP, SNES, NES, Naomi, Atomus Wave, PC Engine, Sega Saturn, Genesis, 32X, Sega CD, all that stuff in RetroArch is going to work fine on a unit like this. But I wanted to test the higher end stuff that a lot of people are moving over to. Like Dreamcast, GameCube, Wii, PS2, PS3, and Wii U. I've made a three-part series on building a unit like this. It started as a $350 PC powered by a 2200G APU with 8 gigabytes of RAM, and then eventually I added a GTX 1660, so that's what we're working with here. I'll leave links in the description to those other videos and the parts used in this build. So with all that out of the way, let's get into some emulation. So first up, we have some Dreamcast emulation using the ReDream emulator. This emulator is awesome. I've been able to run this on lower end systems also with no trouble at all. This is set at 1080p. You can go higher with this system. I also tested a few other games and performance was great, all at 60 FPS. Next up, we have another fantastic emulator. This is Dolphin. It does GameCube and Wii. On screen, we have Smash Brothers running, but I also tested Super Mario Sunshine, Metroid Prime, and Mario Galaxy using the Wii part of this emulator. All of them perform fine. Here we have PCSX2, the PS2 emulator, running Ratchet and Clank. I'm at 720p. Performance is pretty great, but every once in a while you will notice a dip. I've seen it drop as low as about 55 FPS in some situations, but overall I think it performs pretty decently. This is Shadow of the Colossus using the same PC SX2 emulator at 720p. It performs much better than I thought it would on this system. SimU, the Wii U emulator running Breath of the Wild. So as you can see, up in the top left hand corner we have the FPS running. When I look up in the sky, we can get about 60 FPS. I do have FPS++ on, plus SimU hook installed. I can only get around 30 FPS in game with this system. So if you're okay with 30 FPS in this game, which I'm totally fine with, you can play it on this system no problem. Even though Breath of the Wild was only running at 30 FPS, there are still some Wii U games that are going to run at 60. Here's Mario Kart 8. And you got to keep in mind that this emulator and the next one you're going to see here are relatively newer emulators, so over time performance will get better and better. Here's one more for Wii U, this is Bayonetta 2. I do see some dips every once in a while, but performance is pretty steady with this one. RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. This is Tekken 6. As you can see, there's a lot of glitching going on, and in older versions it doesn't do this, but it doesn't perform as well, so I had to stick with the newest version here. Hopefully this can be fixed in the future, because this game will run at full speed on this system. You win. 
One more for RPCS3, this is Skate 3. If we take a look up in the top left hand corner, our CPU is totally maxed out. And even with a 3.9 GHz overclock, you're still not going to get great performance with this game. Let me put it this way, my main gaming machine has a 9600K, that's a 6 core CPU, it's overclocked to 5.1 GHz, and my GPU is an RTX 2080 Ti. I still can't get this game to lock at 60 FPS in every area. And on that rig, the audio is a little better than this, but not by much. So in the end, the bad performance in some of these emulators really boils down to CPU performance. You need good single core performance and multi-core performance, which the 2200G is lacking in both areas. When compared to some Intel CPUs, even the i3-8100 trumps this in single and multi-core performance. They're both quad-core CPUs around the same clock speed, but Intel just does it a little differently. Still, there are thousands and thousands of retro games that you can play on this, and it's actually a pretty good PC gaming machine also. Like I mentioned, I'm going to leave links to the other three videos that I did. I've done some benchmarking, I showed you how to build this and set everything up. It actually worked out pretty well, and for the price, it's really hard to beat unless you go used. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on the channel because I do have a higher-end build coming up very shortly, and it's super small form factor. Of course, it's going to cost more than a system like this, but it's definitely going to outperform it. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.